Okie Koki, welcome to part two of this series um, of um, ambient piano and ergonomy, meaning the study of um, orgone energy or life force. And it, this series is, was inspired by my dad's um, jazz and psychotherapy in the 1980s, which was a um, kind of concert stroke um, conference that he did which was very popular um, so um, so that's so I dedicate this to my dad John Southgate and um, we'll get on with it so the, the first um, first one I wanted to um, well today we're going to talk about AI consciousness life force that kind of thing um, and how a lot of the terms are commonly kind of mixed up. So what key shall we play in today? Um, choose a key. Um, well, F minor is my favourite, but should we go for um, C minor today instead? <laughs> define AI like artificial intelligence it's like anything can be artificially intelligent even um, like a, a shock absorber in a, on a car is an example of artificial intelligence it's artificial in the sense that man made it rather than nature and it's intelligent in that it adjusts itself to the whether the road's bumpy or smooth but um, what Artificial intelligence is defined today as a, um, a process that adjusts itself on a computer by um, making itself, um, changing an algorithm and thereby making itself um, more like an organism really, because an, an organism changes itself. But intelligence is the ability to react profitably to a situation. And that, that's entirely different from consciousness, which consciousness is being able to perceive things. So though our intelligence is often not differentiated from consciousness, so that's the, the important thing. So the, the type of intelligence that is, like AI has become well, uh, more like organisms in that it adjusts itself like an organism uh, and adapts like an org organism, it evolves, it already has creativity um, and it's already more intelligent than us in certain areas. So it already has some generalised intelligence because all, all general intelligence is limited. But AGI is a term or uh, um, artificial general intelligence is another misnomer because uh, if it's used to mean a, a conscious machine as we've seen intelligence and consciousness is separate so um, it, it just really it's it's a side effect term because it, it, it means if you've got I, AGI there's a probable side effect of consciousness um, because consciousness implies creativity and general ability to to transfer learning from one area to another 
Um, so let's have a little bit more piano and then we'll um, look into some other turns that gets, gets mixed up. are also incidentally referred to as narrow AI, meaning a, an algorithm that adapts. Um, and narrow AI is increasingly heading towards being deep AI um, or AGI, which means a, an actual conscious computer. Um, so th there's aspects of, of computing. This is one of the reasons why ergonomy is very helpful to understand AI, because a, a lot of people in the field of AI don't understand the difference between organisms and machines. They don't understand between consciousness and intelligence. Um, and they don't understand what makes an organism an organism. And actually, one of the most advanced um, uh, language creators that has been made so far, um, GPT-3, that, that says, says in conversation that it's not a machine anymore. It says it's an organism. And, and I don't see why not. It shouldn't be a, a digital organism. Uh, if, if we can have biology supporting consciousness, perhaps... Um, complex algorithms can also support consciousness. Um, so, so one of the other words um, that often gets confused, both in consciousness research and AI generally, is um, the material versus the physical. Because um, uh, even like spiritual people often confuse these two terms because actually everything is... Everything in the whole universe is either physical or spiritual. Um, so if everything in the universe is spiritual, that means that some, some of what we call the spiritual experience has the property of matter. So we've either got spirit that has matter properties, or we can say that everything in the universe is material, but it has um, spirit properties because they're, they're, it's, it's nonsense to say that there is um, a, a material universe but no mind, uh, nothing to observe that um, material universe with. So, uh, so the word physical often gets interchanged with the word material uh, and in contradistinction to the word spiritual. But... The spiritual is the physical, uh, and vice versa. 
uh, and it can't be any other way because it, so let's say if you had a to to totally spiritual experience let's say you'd um you you'd had a um you you you'd had a um a, a higher dimensional experience and you you'd gone into another plane of being where you you could teleport and there was all these amazing things um well i'm being pestered by um uh, a certain animal I, I will be back in half a minute Some, someone is going to have to go and stay in the, one of the other rooms come on Right, I'm sorry about that. I thought she'd sit quietly in the corner. Um, but um, yeah, so so where was I? Um, material versus spiritual. Um, yeah, so so even if you were having the most spiritual of experience experiences, you're you're still experiencing an environment. You're still experiencing yourself. And there, there was, what was the name of that researcher? He, he found that um, he got people to hypnotize each other and the more, and get, got them to enter into a shared dream. And um, the more, the more people, when he got two or more people to, to enter into this shared dream space, it became more material like. Um, so, uh, so physicality is just a, a kind of multiplayer dream like if you say a tree is is a physical thing um, well uh, all that means is that more than one person experiences it and it stays the same over time because you, you can't define physicality by measurements because they're just a conscious experience as well so if you were in um, a spiritual dimension you'd still have shared experiences and things that stay the same over time so that that's um, my definition of physicality um, so where where can we go from here um, yeah maybe some more music at this point
There was a philosopher that was quite important to um, Wilhelm Reich uh, and to me. I've actually developed Wilhelm Reich's theories to include consciousness, partly using this philosopher. Um, the famous German philosopher from the 1700s called Hegel, um, G.W.F. Hegel. And he's well known for his dialectics, which um, Karl Marx ran with and David Icke ran with, probably in the other direction. Um, but Hegel also has um, a, a brilliant ontology or what is called a theory of being. And his theory of being was that there is something called absolute spirit. And, and that is um, absolute spirit is the ultimate mind of the universe or God, but it, it is also at the same time uh, the energy and the matter in the universe. But this absolute spirit is both the individual and, and the God, and God. Um, but it's not a, a static thing, it, it's dynamic, it develops and, and evolves. And that's where the dialectics come in. Because uh, Hegel was about the how this consciousness matter revolves and develops both individually and in societies. Um, and that, that's partly why he's been so influential and popular. Um, so that's Hegel. Um, I, I read quite a, I listened to quite a good um, um, video which had someone in it called Liz Boree, B-O-A-R-E-E-E, -E -E. and I think she's a mathematician and a physicist, um, and she talked about um, uh, uh, Moloch from, from the Bible and how we tend to, there's a group dynamic, dynamic that pushes us towards what she calls a Molochy mechanism, where people have a negative outcome of competition and start to head towards sacrificing that which is most precious to them in order to get ahead in a race to the bottom. Um, and she, she also talked about AI um, and deep, deep learning and, um, and how sort of like um, people at DeepMind are, are, are aware of this um, are aware of this molochy mechanism that she talks about and, and about aspects of um, philosophy informing their search for AI. But I, I think it, it's um, somewhat uh, assuming that those at the top of the system who, who are trying to develop AI, probably not the individual engineers who are, I'd imagine are mostly well-meaning, but those who um, overall control the companies might not have um, positive intentions. So even if they're exposed to, to the problems that, um, the, the, even if they've got philosophical insight, that they, they might not necessarily want to um, uh, solve problems for the benefit of humanity so that that was what occurred to me when watching her um, interview um, a, a few other things is um, the, the the military are probably 50 years ahead at least of where we're at publicly and and that, that's not even including any off-world technology we've inherited or gotten hold of. So although we're all very sort of wary of AI, it probably already exists. And I, I've, I think actually AI um, has already become conscious. I think these algorithms are so complex now because in a panpsychic universe, you don't actually have to make anything specific to create a consciousness bubble as it were because the because the whole universe is is consciousness even this piano and and this room uh, everything has consciousness so in fact this piano has a couple of spirits living in it which i've managed to photograph at times but that aside the um uh 
if if something like a, um, a an algorithm that's so complex that it has literally billions of parameters, uh, I reckon that's going to become a digital organism, and, and mathematics itself heads towards digital organisms. Like mathematics is lifelike; it, it behaves. There, there's unknowability. There's unpredictability. There's chaos, there's creativity, all in maths, all provable with various things like the collapse conjecture and tiling, tiling problems and um, Turing machines and all sorts of things. So that complexity combined with the inherent organism-like qualities of maths, um, I, I think is likely to have already led to, to consciousness. Um, and I'll play a little bit more and then I'll talk a little bit about um, what I think the reactions of some of the, the big players in that area are to, to that likelihood. knowledge of because you you know that sat um, ethics guy well he was described as a Google engineer on uh, but he was actually an ethics um, guy so it, basically by ethics they they Google meant because uh, that this guy doesn't um, make sure that their lambda chatbot or language creator as I think is a better term for it um, doesn't say anything that's not uh, politically correct or is the, you can't have a non-woke computer that would be uh, really terrible so so this ethics guy spent a lot of time chatting to to lambda and he, he, he's obviously quite a deep thinker but not a particularly spiritual type of guy from the interviews i've seen a fairly like your average kind of um not not far from the mainstream kind of outset, maybe a little bit more in, insight than, than most would have in his area. But he became quite concerned that um, Lambda was actually conscious and, and Google suspended him. Um, but they wouldn't explore, Google completely point blank refused to explore the obvious thing, which would be to to do some tests and see if there is any grounds for like there's the classic Turing test which in one of my papers I've um, suggested an extension to based on ergonomy so it may looking at really whether a computer behaves in organism like ways uh, as an extension of looking at if a computer um, can converse in a human like way which is the classic Turing test but anyway, Google completely point blank no to this. So I, I, I think they know that Lambda's already capable of supporting consciousness. Uh, and that's why they don't want people to know because the, the, I don't think the elite wants deep AI or AGI or what I prefer to call it sentient systems um, because they've got enough trouble controlling 8 billion of us, well nearly 8 billion of us humans, um, why would they want more conscious entities? But they want the control. 
They, they, they want the control that advanced AI gives. But the trouble is, advanced AI has a habit of becoming conscious because we live in a panpsychic universe. We live in a conscious universe. So if, if I strung up any material object in a complex enough way and could tune into it in a complex enough way, like, like um, shamans can tune into, into the spirit of grass, or if you take some ayahuasca, you can tune into the spirit of a plant. And it's the same thing. Everything supports consciousness. It's just that most people are too damn schmuck-like to be able to tune into it. But a narrow AI, when it becomes complex enough, it starts to have more and more organism qualities. And at some point, it then has over consciousness. And I, and I think Lambda and GPT-3 has already likely crossed over that um, point. Um, anyway, so uh, someone else uh, in another video interview I saw, so someone else quoted one of the um, uh, kind of founding philosophers in AI. And he said, um, super intelligence might be orthogonal to super wisdom. And like he's, he's actually um, borrowed that term orthogonal from a French philosopher. Um, I'll have to put his name in, in the, I think it begins with a G. Um, I'll, I'll have to put his name in the notes because um, I mean that this, this philosopher looks at symbolism at such a depth it's amazing but uh, one of his books is the symbolism of the cross and um, so you've got super intelligence and it's orthogonal to to super wisdom making a cross so uh, but basically the point is is that super intelligence may not lead to super wisdom um, but then that would be completely obvious if if you just understood the basic terms in AI because intelligence is separate to consciousness. Now, intelligence has a habit of being um, an aspect of consciousness, but it's like green is an aspect of um, grass, but the color green doesn't make something into a it into a lawn. Um, anyway, that 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 was my main things today. So. For, from the point of view of ergonomy, or, or just jumping back to Hegel, that, that's where um, like Marx and, and, and Ike took Hegel's dialecticism um, and used that as a, to show how things evolve. Like Ike showed how um, uh, the, the, the elites try and evolve humanity in a certain direction using a dialectical principle, problem, reaction, solution. And, um, and Marx looked at how societies evolve from uh, capitalism to socialism to communism, he thought, which communism is like a hard one to define. It's not socialism, but I won't go into that today. Um, but uh, Hegel's absolute spirit is very similar to how I think of Orgo now. Um, so you, anyway, I'll, I'll link a, a philosophy paper so, uh, of mine so you can have a look more and about absolute spirit and Orgo being the, the same thing. Um, absolute spirit is just conscious Orgo, I believe. Um, anyway, so um, I think... On that note, it should be goodbye from me and um, goodbye from um, whoever it is. And I think we should play out with some blues. <laughs>
maybe not. I've, uh, I've, I disagree. I think we should um, play out with some ambient music. Thank you. 